Hi there my chickens and welcome back to NTE. Right, in today's video what I have is a past exam question that was asked to me by a learner quite a few, yeah, let's just say quite some time ago. I do apologize that it's late. Okay, it's a question on Euclidean geometry and it is from November 2009. It is quite an old question but it is also a very uh, interesting question. In terms of that, it helps you to really see how the examiners want you to plan. Okay, and I like this one because way back in 2009, the examiners did not actually help you to see how to get to the answer, you had to figure it out yourself. Okay, all right, so it says in the figure below, AB is a tangent to the circle with center O. So let's quickly highlight that tangent. Okay. We also have that BA is parallel to CE and I have not indicated that on our diagram and lastly they tell us that DC produced right which means that it goes beyond the circle right cuts they could have also used the word meets right the tangent here at this point B okay first question simply wants us to show that angle C2 right so this angle here angle C2 we want to show that is equals to angle D1. Okay, all right. So if you quickly trace back angle C2, I think the parallel lines are going to work in our favor here. I can see that angle C2 is alternate, okay, with angle A4, okay. So angle C2 is alternate with angle A4 forming a Z shape over there and at exactly the same time since angle A4 is an angle between our tangent and the chord AC by the tan chord theorem remember we can then conclude that that angle is equals to angle D1 okay the angle in the alternate segment okay so let's write that down so for question 11.1 right our solution is simply going to be that angle a4 is equal to angle c2 these are alternate angles okay would be a parallel to ce okay please remember never to forget to note down your parallel sides okay we also noted that angle a4 is equals to angle D1, right? Why? Well, this is simply the tan chord theorem. Right. And then by logic, right, you can see if angle A4 is equals to angle A4, thus we can then show exactly what they want us to show that angle C2 is equals to angle D1. Okay. So therefore, angle C2 is equal to angle D1 and we can say our reason here is that they are both equal to angle A4. Alright, then the next question then says uh, prove that triangle ACF okay that small triangle there please just follow my pen prove that it is similar remember those three vertical lines mean similar to the triangle a d c okay all right so that's relatively an easy proof of similarity remember when we are proving similarity it is enough okay for us to prove that two angles on the inner triangle are equal that's because the third angle of the triangle will then be automatically equal okay so we're going to prove this using angle angle similarity and because the triangle a CF is inside of the triangle ADC you can already see they share an angle so that's one angle that we have already that's equal between the two triangles we need to find another one well the other one is these two angles that we just proved okay angle D1 equal to angle C2 that will be the other pair of angles that are equal okay so 11.2 we're going to say in triangle ACF and triangle ADC 
the first fact that we have is that angle A3 is equal to angle A3. If I can just quickly remind you, that is that common angle over there. Okay, An angle that is within both those triangles. Okay, And that's going to be exactly our reason. This is a common angle. Or you can write a shared angle, same thing. And then the second thing is that angle, let's just quickly see which one we need to say. Remember we're starting with triangle ACF, so we need to name a tri an angle sorry, that is within this triangle, and that's going to be uh, angle C2. So we then have that angle C2 is equal to angle D1. Okay, And this we can just write proven in 11.1. Or you can write proven above, right? And thus, we prove that the two triangles are similar. And our reason is angle, angle, right? Because we just proved two angles equal between the two triangles. So we used angle, angle, similarity. Okay. All right. Uh, last question. Prove that AD is equal to 4 times AF. This is now the crux of this question, right? Uh, it's really where I like it a lot. Okay, So the way that we're going to do this, we have to think, right? We need to plan very carefully and we need to think. Okay, Usually these types of proofs will come from any similarity that you uh, show. Okay, So if they ask you to show any similarity, uh, that is going to be golden for you, right? Uh, you can also even think about the triangle proportionality theorem sometimes. Okay, that can also uh, help. All right, and any given information can also help. Right, so in this case, this given information for us is going to be gold. Right, over here where they said AC is equal to AO, that is going to be a very good starting point for us. Okay, because if we look at the diagram and we make the connections, I uh, hope you can see that AO, right, is actually a part of AD, right? And this side AD is one of the sides of the bigger triangles, right, that were involved in our similarity. So we can use that to our advantage. Okay, which means we can now say... For question 11.3, right, there's going to be lots of substitution that's going to happen here. Right, we're going to say AD, right, is equal to 2 times AO, right. That's simply because AD is the diameter. Okay, sorry, that didn't come out right. Just want to write diameter. Okay, simply because the AD side is the diameter of your circle, right? Uh, we know that the diameter is twice its radius, okay? Then we also have that AC is equal to AO. This is given information, okay? So then, therefore, I'm going to make a substitution that AD is twice AC, okay? I hope you can see this is an O. Right? That's going to be one of our equations. Then, like we said, we notice that the side AD is part of the triangles that we just proved similar. So we're going to have to use that similarity. So I can say from triangle ACF being similar to triangle ADC, right? I can now then inspect this to try to see what other equation may I get that connects this AD and the AC, okay? Because this is now where the question is leading me to, okay? All right, so when I look at this, I can see that AD is over here. It's this side over here in that triangle, okay? So which means if I'm going to have to focus on this AD, I'm going to have to use this triangle as my numerator, okay? And I'm going to use this second triangle or this first triangle here as my denominator. 
okay I'm talking now about the fraction that I'm going to set up okay so AD is these first two letters so I have to match it on the other side and take the first two letters okay so my first fraction is going to be AD divided by AC and I have to make that equal to something okay like we said our focus right now and this comes purely from the question right is to make a connection between or somehow develop another equation between AD and AC okay so I'm now going to look for AC because I started on this side to do my first fraction I have to start on this side as well and find an AC so here is an AC okay can you see that first and last the first and last letter form the AC so then I'm going to have to connect it with first and last in this triangle as well in the other triangle okay so then that gives me the fraction AC over AF okay now let's quickly cross multiply here if you cross multiply you're going to get AD times AF okay that comes from that cross multiplication and then over here you're going to get AC times AC okay which is simply just AC squared okay all right so here is another equation that we can work with let's just quickly see you have an AD, you have an AF. This is a very good thing to introduce because look at what you're trying to prove. You're trying to prove that AD is 4 times AF. Okay, So we need to keep the AD, we need to keep the AF, we need to keep these two things. right? So we need to make a substitution for AC. That is then going to come from this equation that we developed above. We just need to change it a bit. Okay this corresponds with the equation um, a half AD okay so a half AD is AC okay if you divide both sides by 2 over there okay I'm now going to take this half AD and substitute it in here for AC okay so a half AD and that's squared okay this is AD times AF Okay, so then I have AD times AF is equal to 1 over 4, that is if you square the half, and AD squared. Okay, all right, we are almost there. Divide both sides by AD. You will see that these ADs will cancel, that AD will cancel with one of them over there, leaving you with AF is equal to 1 over 4 AD okay then I can multiply both sides by 4 to cancel those 4's right then I can finally now say okay the AD is now by itself I'm just going to write it the way they want it I can finally say that AD is 4 times AF okay